Saint Overboard by Leslie Chartres, dramatised by Neville Teller, with Paul Rees as the saint and Patsy Kensett as Loretta Page. From the waves she rose in the dead of night, like Aphrodite in a green bathing cap. Somewhere in the depths of the yacht, my man Oris was snoring soundly, but I'd been sleeping with the porthole open, and I heard her coming. I slid out of bed and hauled myself up the companionway. Overhead, according to the calendar, there was a full moon. But in one of those freakish fits of temperament that sometimes strike the north coast of France in early summer, banks of sea mist had rolled up. And then I heard what sounded suspiciously like revolver shots. Midnight dip! Not exactly. I know it's a bit of a cheek, but that launch coming up behind, well, I'd prefer them not to find me. Say no more. Here, grab hold of my hand. There we go. Get down below and hide. Thank you so much. Lost something? Not exactly. Seen anyone swimming around here by any chance? At this hour, channel swimmers usually hit the beach further east, towards Calais. It's nothing like that. Just one of our party took on a silly bet. I expect he has gone back. Thanks, anyway. Goodbye. Sorry for troubling you. Come out, come out, wherever you are. My, my. It's a bit wet in the water tonight. Just a little. Try the bathrobe. Brandy or hot coffee? Neither, really. I think I'd better be getting back to collect my bet. Ah, yes. The bet. Pretty high stakes if all that shooting is anything to go by. At least use these towels. All right. Those shots, they were just part of the make-believe. Hmm. I'm rather partial to these games myself. They help pass the long evenings. Who did the shooting? The man who spoke to you from the dinghy. Right. I'll be off. I don't think so. What did you say? You can't possibly try to swim across in this fog. A hundred to one, you'd miss your boat. I'll run you back. Under no circumstances. I I won't go with you. You won't go without me. Then I'll stay here. Have you thought what would happen if I screamed? I could rouse half the harbour. I dare say, sister. But have you stopped to consider what would happen if I screamed? (laughs) What? Well, this tub's mine. And you're trespassing. You couldn't even claim I'd invited you on board. You're wearing a wet bathing costume and very little else. I'm intrigued by that pouch on your waistband, but let that pass. No, people would ask why you suddenly decided to start screaming at half past three in the morning. Besides which, this is a French port. And Frenchmen have such a wonderful grip on the facts of life. As you say, French juries are so understanding in cases where a woman shoots her lover. Stand back. Away. Over there. Well, well, well. So it was a gun. Now I may never know what sent you swimming through the fog in the wee small hours with a gun on your belt, but why not stay the night and shoot me after breakfast? I won't complain then, I promise you. You've got a nerve. I'll give you that. Look, from the brief gander I had at old Hooknose in the dinghy, he looked like a man's job to me. I know you've got what it takes, but these games can get pretty tough, and I hate being jockeyed out of a good fight. I'm going now. Don't think I'm afraid to shoot, because I'm not. Get out of the way. Oh, well, if that's the way you feel about it, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Beast! I'm sorry, kid. There. Oh. There. There. Damn you. Oh. I'm Loretta Page. It's a nice name. And you? Oh, I have dozens. Simon Templar's the only real one. Some people call me the Saint. S.T., you know. So you're the Saint. 
I've read all about you. I'm flattered. Well, there's no need. It's only in the way of business. I'm a detective. Are you just? Where are the bracelets? No, listen. You've done some stealing in your time. Well, with discretion. Well, there's a racket running today that steals millions. It's been going for years. I couldn't begin to guess how much money has been taken out of it since it began. I know, darling, but you can't do anything about it. It's called income tax. Oh, do be serious. Now, have you heard of the Lutin? It sank, didn't it? Mm. In 1799, with about a million pounds worth of gold on board, the last attempt to salvage the cargo was a couple of years ago. The Lutina Company developed a special underwater sand sucker to clear the silt. The only trouble was that the ship carrying it to the wreck was blown sky high, and the explosion wasn't an accident. Is that it? No, no. The same year, an American salvage ship went out to search a wreck off Cape Charles, the Merida, which sank in、uh, 1911,、mm. and took the Emperor Maximilian's crown jewels to the bottom with her. Another million pound cargo. They found the ship, but the cupboard was bare, and fish don't wear jewelry. I take it there are others. Oh yes, quite a few. I could give you a list of ships known to have sunk with bullion on board, which have been located and examined and found to be as clean as a whistle. So this is what you're detecting.、Mm. I'm with the Ingebeck Agency.、Mm. We're on contract to Lloyd's. We've been on this case for the last five years. You? No, Ingebecks. The insurers have known for a long time that there's some highly organised racket cheating them out of six figures each year. Dangerous work. Oh, it is. Three of our men have simply disappeared. One of them found a trail leading to Dinar, but we ran up against a brick wall. The men just couldn't get inside the racket. Well, we reckon there's another way. There must be a top man,、mm -hmm. and the odds are, he's human. Ah, so you came out here to be human with him? I haven't succeeded so far. I I've had dinner with him, but I haven't been invited on board his boat. Tonight I tried to get on board without an invitation. And Dan nearly got shot for your pains. All very interesting. But why tell me?、Mm, just because you are who you are.、Mm. I thought you might be intrigued enough to become involved. On the side of the angels, for once.、Mm, could be. Two things: the name of the boat you wanted to look at, the Falkenberg, and the name of the boyfriend, the bloke who passed in the night, Kurt Vogel. How very appropriate! I'll call him Birdie when we get acquainted. Now, when you're ready, I'll row you ashore, and no argument.、Mm. No argument. <sighs> Where will I see you? How about the beach opposite the casino, Plage de Lacus? Mid-morning, on the beach.、Mm. Mm. Any developments? Oh, good morning. You could say so. I'm invited to dine with friend Fogel on the Falkenberg. You're not thinking of accepting, not after last night. What part of last night? I'm serious. Fogel might know his intruder was a woman. It may be a trap. It's possible, and I'm going all the same, and for a very good reason. There's a new salvage operation just about to set sail from Falmouth. Do you remember the Chalfont Castle disaster off the Channel Islands? Yeah, a few months ago. That's it. There's five million pounds in gold bullion aboard that ship. We reckon Fogel will be sailing somewhere close to Aldney before too long. Well, even more necessary for keeping clear of him. Oh, I don't know. Maybe Kurt Fogel isn't as bad as he's painted. He left some lovely flowers with his invitation. You watch out. You'll be falling for him next. I might. Well. When you're riding around in your rolls, half strangled with diamonds, I hope the memory of your lost love comes back to haunt you. Oh, you're breaking my heart. I hope so. Enjoy the sun and the sea breezes. I'm going in search of our mutual friend. <laughs> I fancy a chance meeting. Good luck. We meet again. Good morning. Ah, 
I'm pleased to see you. You've been on my conscience. I hope you didn't think I was too unceremonious about disturbing you last night. Not at all. I'd only just gone to bed. Uh, excuse me, this is the world-famous Professor Yule. Oh, uh, how do you do? <laughs> my name is Fogel. Won't you join us, Mr... Um... Toombs. Thank you. You staying long? I've no plans. I'll stay until I get tired of the place. It does not agree with everybody. Some people find it definitely unhealthy. Garçon? Monsieur? Mr. Toombs? An absinthe. Thank you. And you, Professor Yule. Uh, you must find it quite relaxing after all the excitement. Oh, uh, you've heard of me. Who hasn't? It must have been an amazing experience. Oh, fascinating. And uh, rather frightening. Not to say uncomfortable. Perhaps you don't know that the temperature of water falls rapidly the further down you go. At 5,000 feet below the sea, it's only a few degrees above freezing. I'm installing extra heating in my next bath stall. You're going down again, though. Oh, yeah, I've only just started. I hope to get down twice as far with a new model. And even that's nothing. If some of the latest alloys turn out all right, we may be able to have a look at the Cape Verde Basin. Over 3,000 fathoms. Monsieur. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> And what do you hope to find? Uh, no information about depth currents for a start. And uh, then I'll be on the lookout for marine life at depths never reached before. And I'm also hoping for some evidence about Wegener's theory of mm. continental drift. An exciting program. Mm. Well, uh, none of it would be possible without Mr. Vogel. <laughs> My first descent nearly ruined Garçon, me. Garçon, l'addition, s'il vous plaît. Monsieur. Uh, won't you have another? I'm afraid we have an engagement. Uh, next time, perhaps. If you're interested, you might like to come out with us on a trial trip. Mm. It won't be very sensational, just a test for the new apparatus in moderately deep water. I'd love to. It won't be here. The water is too shallow. We're using the Herd Deep, north of Alderney. We will be leaving for St. Peterport in the morning. Care to join us? Well, that sort of an invitation doesn't drive every day. And we may be seeing you. Yeah. I'll give you a shout in the morning as we go by. See if you have made up your mind. So, old Bean, how was your weekend? Rotten, since you ask, old man. House party at the Cunninghams. Oh, God. Rain solidly from start to finish. Oh, nothing to enliven the proceedings, eh? Oh, you know me, Peter. Something turned up on Saturday night, but I didn't <laughs> have to bury myself in Shropshire for the pleasure. And you? Stayed in the flat. Town can be just as boring as the country, Roger, believe you me. Let's be honest about it. Life is boring without Simon. Where is he? Oh, messing about in his boat somewhere. Dinar, I think. I got a card last week over there. Hmm. Uh, sea, sun, and Oris. Who could ask for anything more? <laughs> yeah, Peter Quentin. Hello, Peter, old sport. Your Uncle Simon here. It's Simon. Oh. Uh, speak up, old man. The line's ghastly. Who have you got with you? Uh, Roger's here. Splendid. Two birds with one stone. Now listen. Didn't you once tell me you had a respectable family? He still is. I'm the only one who's had anything to do with you. Aha. Uh -huh. Any of them know anything about Lloyd's? Uh, I have a sort of cousin who works there. Right. Dig him out and stage a reunion. Then find out whatever you can about the Chalfont Castle. Like a shot, old boy. But are you sure you don't want an estate agent? Oh, I don't, you fathead. It's a wreck, not a ruin. She sank somewhere near Alderney a few months ago. I want you to find out precisely where she went down. Get a chart and get the exact spot marked. Then send it to me at the post restaurant, St. Peterport, Guernsey. Tonight. Name of Tombs. Name of what? Tombs. Tombs. As in Tutankhamen. Oh, tombs! All clear? As mud. Now put Roger on. You go, man. <coughs> Hello, Simon. You on the warpath again? Possibly. Um, do you think you could buy me a nice diving suit, Roger? Huh? One of the new self contained models with oxygen tanks. Say you're representing a movie company and you want it for an undersea epic. What's the racket? No racket, Roger. I've just taken up submarine geology. Now, if you bought that outfit this afternoon and posted it off to me... Well, well, why don't I bring it out? Give me that phone. Oh. <laughs> and why don't I bring out the chart? No, send both parcels. That's important. Understood? Understood. But you can both come out to Guernsey, if you want. Oh, no. I might need a bit more muscle. So you'd better make it two suits while you're at it. You toughs can put up at the Royal. But you're not to recognise me unless I recognise you first. It may be worth a point or two if the ungodly don't know we're connected. Sold? It's a deal. Come in. Simon, by all that's wonderful, what on earth are you doing in the hotel? Calling on you. And not a moment too soon, by the look of things. 
Good afternoon. I hope I intrude. Loretta, who is this guy? And how do you know he's on the up and up? I don't, but he has a nice clean smile. Who's the heartthrob? Steve Murdoch meets Simon Templer. So this is him? You're with Ingebex? That's right. Hmm. Okay, Saint, I know you're tough, but keep out of my hair. I've got a big job to do. Been here long? Landed at Cherbourg this morning. Did you ask for Loretta at the desk? What if I did? See anyone sit up and take notice? I didn't look. Oh, you should have. There was a bloke kicking his heels in a corner with watchdog written all over him. I walked through with my face buried in a newspaper, but he must have seen you. Fogel's taking no chances, then. This proves he's suspicious of you already. Now Steve here has rolled up, shouting your name. He'll be asking himself, who is he? What's he here for? I can look after myself. I'm sure you can, dear old skunk. That's not the point. Loretta's supposed to be all innocent and girlish charm. If they think she's involved in any Matahari business, she might as well pack up and go home. That is, if they let her. So? So, clean yourself up. Anything that connects you with Ingebex, flush it down the toilet, and then blow. What? Vamoose. Skidaddle. Pass out into the night. Loretta can go downstairs with you, and you can both act out a fond farewell in the foyer. And then you beetle down to the pier and catch the next ferry back to dear old Blighty. Then take the first steamer you can get to St. Peter Port in Guernsey. That's where Fogel will be tomorrow. How do you know that? He told me. We got into conversation before lunch. So we were right. It is the Chalfont Castle he's after. Lorena, this guy wants me out of the way for his own reasons. And I'll give you one guess what they are. Steve, you're on your way. The day I start taking orders from some fancy limey, you'll you be... You aren't, <clears throat> Steve. You're taking them from me. The saint's right. Orders? It's what I said. Until Martin Ingebeck takes me off this assignment, you do what I tell you. I just hope you don't live to regret this. As for you, if anything happens to Loretta... You'll I'll... be the first to know. Good afternoon. Coming, Loretta? We have some play acting to get through. Give me a moment, Steve. I'll be right down. I'll leave while you're seeing Steve off. I can't risk the foyer again, but I spotted a fire escape in the corridor. Must you go? Not because I want to, Loretta. But Fogel and his crew ought to be seeing me get back to the Corsair. I take it you still mean to go across to the Falkenberg tonight? Absolutely. Did I dream the rest of it after you'd gone last night? I don't know, Simon. What did you dream? That you came back to me. That's when the danger would really start. I dreamt that you didn't think it too dangerous. But I am afraid. Simon, I'm scared to death. Oh, my darling. Mm. Let's be scared together. And I'll keep watch over you. Mm. 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 I sat on board the Corsair and about half past seven watched the tender speed towards the Falkenberg, with Fogel in evening dress sitting beside Loretta. I let the dark deepen a little, then went below to get into my swimming trunks, taking a leaf from Loretta's book and fastening my automatic to the belt. The dark waters received me without a sound, and a few minutes later the hull of the Falkenberg loomed ahead. As I climbed on board, a door opened further up the deck, and footsteps began to move towards me. In another second, I was spread-eagled on the deckhouse roof, peeping warily down over the edge. This open piece of deck is rather pleasant for sitting out. We rig an awning over that boom if the sun is too strong. It must be marvellous to own a boat like this. To be able to have you here, this is pleasant. At other times, it can be a very lonely ownership. That must be your own choice. It is. I'm a rich man. If I told you how rich, you'd think I was exaggerating. I could fill this boat a hundred times over with delectable company. A generous millionaire is always attractive. I have never done so. Do you know that you're the first woman who has set foot on this deck? I'm flattered. You have tempted me to be foolish. For years I've shut women out of my life. Who wants to be hurt? And yet what's wealth without women? I have broken the rules of a lifetime to bring you here. Now I want you to stay. You'll change your mind in the morning. You don't know me yet, Loretta. Like you, I look facts in the face. 
I know you're the kind of woman I can forget to be cold with. Stay here. Stay. No. N no, I, I must have time. Ask me again tomorrow. I'm leaving tomorrow. We're going to St. Peterport. I hoped you'd come with me. You will come? <clears throat> Monsieur Vogel, sir, excuse me. Yes, what is it? Uh, we've seen someone prowling about the ship again. Where? Over on the port side, sir. Uh, there. There, do you see him? Ah, yes. I think I can get him. But you're not going to shoot him. I ever not. An intruder? A thief? Lying flat on the deck house roof, at first I couldn't believe this report of a prowler. Then I, too, saw the shadow, and there was only one thing to do. I stepped off the roof and fell on Fogel, one foot knocking the automatic out of his hand and the other striking flat-soled at the side of his head. Fogel staggered against the rail and fell to his knees. Loretta stared at me, half incredulous. I put my fingers to my lips and kissed them out to her. Then, as Fogel began to drag himself up, I launched myself into the sea. As I broke surface, a canoe was moving by me. I caught the gunwale. Ooh. I thought I told you to say goodbye to France. I thought I told you I didn't take your orders. They were Loretta's orders, Steve, remember? She's crazy, too. I'm staying where I like. I'm getting shot for it, and I won't interfere next time. Let go of this boat! What's more, dear old skunk, you're putting Loretta in danger. Says you. And that's something I won't allow. Let go of this boat! And so I will, old man. Once you're in here with me. Stop it! Get What is it? Well, Oris, old bean, I'd describe it as a sort of detective. Unsavory-looking object, isn't it? He dead? Not yet. He's doing his best. I don't expect he'll feel too happy when he wakes up. Let's get him below and see. Oh, I'll manage him, sir. There's a crowd down them stairs. Right you are. <laughs> Lay on Macduff. <sighs> Oh, my aching head. What, what the hell is this? Just another boat, Stephen. On your left, the port side. On your right, the starboard. Huh? Up there's the sharp end. Oh, can it? Why'd you bring me here? For a brief chat. Now, do please try to get it through that thick skull of yours. I don't give two hoots how soon you have your funeral. But Loretta's your only chance of getting to the bottom of Fogel's little racket, and you're in danger of blowing it. That's what you'd like to believe. For crying out loud, you're known! Thanks to your brilliant strategy of tearing into the Hotel de la Mer and shouting for Loretta at the top of your voice, the bloke who was sleuthing her this afternoon knows your face. If he'd seen you tonight during your little escapade, that would have been that. For Loretta, anyway. And you feel like a father towards now, you? Now, that's my business. I'll say it is. I know you, saint. You're as crooked as a corkscrew. You're in this racket for what you can get out of it. Dingy approaching, sir. Ah, Oris, not a moment too soon. Do you think you could trust this object up and dispose of it? What? Keep it quiet and well out of the way. I'm damned if you're going to tie Shut me. Up. Hey, what the... Shut up, you. Mm. Just give me two minutes, sir. That's all you'll have. Mm. I'm afraid we'll be having some unwelcome guests shortly. Oris, old bean, it's up to you. Bye-bye, Steve. <laughs> Must love you and leave you. <laughs> Ahoy, Corsair! Ahoy to you! Hello there, Mr. Fogel. May I come aboard for a moment? Of course. Now, let me give you a hand. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm afraid this is a most unseemly hour for a visit. <laughs> Not at all. I never go to bed very early. Um, come down to the saloon. Uh, now, what will you have to drink? Horace! I only call to see if you've decided about tomorrow. Well, yes. I would rather like to come. Oh. Thought you might be wanting the whiskey and some glasses, sir. Uh, Oris anticipates my every need. Is whiskey all right for you? Whiskey will do very well. How do you take it? A splash of soda, but don't drown it. No, sir. Oris and I take ours neat. Good health. Good health. Then we will expect you tomorrow. Loretta is coming too. Loretta? You know, Miss Page? No, I, I'm afraid I don't know the lady. 
Oh, I do beg your pardon. My memory is playing me tricks. Perhaps you'll meet her in Guernsey. What a charming boat this is, Mr. Toombs. What's her tonnage? About 25. Delightful. I envy you. Something like this all to yourself, without bothering about crews and formalities. All the other cabins as attractive as this. Well, they're pretty comfortable. I should love to see them. I had no idea a small boat could be so luxurious. Well, um, let me show you around. Oris! And did you fit her out yourself? Indeed I did. Ah, Oris, I shall be um, showing our guest over the boat. Right you are, sir. Everything uh, ship-shape and um, Bristol fashion. As usual, sir. Right you are. Follow me, Mr. Fogel. Ah, the galley. Here's where we open the tins and unscrew the bottles. On the right, the refrigerator, oh. where we keep the beer warm. Beautifully fitted. And under here? Ah, mops and buckets. <laughs> A place for everything and everything in its place. Apparently. That's just the bathroom and toilet. Adequate, but really no room to swing a cat. A bathroom, really? Remarkable on a boat this size. May I look? Um, by all means. In here. An empty bath, as you see. But such a charming green... Very nice. And a shower, too. I almost wish I could find something you have forgotten. Down here, a small single cabin. Charming. And a fitted wardrobe, may I? Ah, surprisingly spacious. And over here, the double cabin. And the double wardrobe. The space you have managed to find. You could hide a small army, please. You will permit me to see the fittings? Of course. Just, um... Boring old clothes, I'm afraid. Ah, indeed. And that door at the end? The forecastle. That's Oris's uh, quarters. I can't believe you have managed to squeeze in yet another cabin. It's scarcely believable and also luxurious. I'm quite intrigued. May I? Uh, just uh, a peep? Help yourself. Ah. Excellent. Excellent. I have seen many boats where the owner's quarters aren't as good. And that's all, is it, Mr. Toombs? Well, you can't get much more into a 50-footer. Indeed you can't. And up there? Oh, just a hatchway to the deck. Oh. Follow me. Here we are. Back to square one. I must apologise. I'm afraid my enthusiasm ran away with me. I should never have asked you to show me around at this hour. Not at all. It's a pleasure. I assure you it's been worth it to me. Ivalov! Sir? I'm coming down. We'll look out for you then at St. Peter Port. I'll be there at tea time. Good night. And many thanks. Au revoir. Horace? How is that? Horace, you won't devil. You find anything out of place, sir? You goddamn old son of a walrus. Where is he? You're practically leaning on him. What's that? Beneath that mainsail. I sort of laid him along the boom and tucked the canvas round him. Snug as a bug in a rug. Here he is. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's gone. Simon, good to see you. Roger, me old sport. Good crossing. Mm. Peter, how are you? Yeah, all the better for seeing you. And no, since you asked, the crossing was lousy. Uh. Up and down all the way from Weymouth. Well, you're both here in picturesque Guernsey. That's the main thing. What about the goods? Have they arrived? Consigned as requested. I've arranged for the diving suits to be sent over to the Corsair. I saw a moored in the harbour as we came into St Peterport. Yeah, and you can pick up the chart from the post office whenever you like. Top hole. I knew I could rely on you. And now, are you going to let on what this is all about? Well, basically, money. Promising. Yeah, how much money? Millions. Better and better. Come on, spill the beans. Well, my merry men, it goes like this. There once was a little birdie... As I see it, there's no bonus for anyone in simply putting Fogel away. The underwriters must want to recover some of the money they've lost in claims since he went into business. And Ingebex won their commission. And we want both. Well, yes and no. Elucidate. I'm not sure it is money we're after. 
The sort of boodle they've been lifting from the seabed, you know, uncut diamonds, half a ton of bar gold, that takes time and organisation to get rid of. Hey, mm. you, you mean you can't just cart them into the nearest pawn shop and ask how much they'll give you on them? Just so, <laughs> old sport. You have to park them somewhere. Meaning, if we could find this parking spot... Or at least find out where it is. Then follow friend Fogel when he goes to fetch some of the boodle out, or put some more in... Well, you get the general drift. Clearest mud, Captain. Just one thing. The uh, beautiful heroine? She's only trying to get at Fogel from his soft side, if he has one. I'll take care of her. Yes, that's what I thought. I ought to have known we couldn't afford to give you a start like this. If you're staking a claim on the heroine, I think I'll go home. Is it a claim, sir? I don't know. Now, communications... Oris and I will get in touch with you here. Mm -hmm. If we can't send a message, we'll put a bucket on the deck of the Corsair, which means you look out for signals. Now, remember the old card code? Mm -hmm. We'll put the cards in one of the portholes. Any questions? What's your next move? Me? Tomorrow they're trying out Professor Yule's new bathystal. I'm invited to the party. Meanwhile, it's dinner with Fogel tonight, in my guise as the innocuous Mr Toombs. You're walking a tightrope, Saint... Watch out, you don't slip. (laughs) (laughs) Really? (laughs) Ah, excellent, Mr. Toombs, you were able to join us. Uh, Let me introduce you to Miss Page. How do you do? How do you do? And Mr. Arnheim? Good evening. Good evening. It's a nasty bruise, Mr. Fogel. Uh, Yes, he had an intruder on board last night. I got the worst of the encounter. Did you catch him? I'm afraid not. Oh, well. Better luck next time. Is Professor Yule not joining us? We could not drag him away from his bathist stall. Not on the eve of a descent. He'll be working on it for half the night. And now let us order. I recommend the seafood. Magnificent. Straight from the nets. Why haven't I told you how beautiful you are, Loretta? Because you haven't noticed. Because so many other ridiculous things have been happening all the time. Last night, for instance, I went diving off into the sea and left you on board Fogel's boat. So you did, Simon. Well? Well? Apparently it wasn't death, so I suppose it must have been dishonor. It might turn out to be both. Please, Simon, we don't dance together too long. Tell me what you know. Well, I was no sooner in the sea than there was Steve in his canoe. We had a bit of a disagreement. (laughs) Again? In the middle of the ocean? There's no choosing time or place. Anyway, I slugged him and brought him aboard the Corsair. Fogel came over shortly afterwards and put in a great performance of being shown over the boat. Luckily, Oris had disposed of Steve and he didn't find him. So you're still the innocent Mr. Toombs. That's me. Unfortunately, Steve got away somehow, so I haven't the foggiest idea where he is right now. And I don't care. Not right now. You're the one who's here, Simon. Me and you, darling Loretta. No, no. Fogel's looking at us. Simon, do you love me? Indeed I do. Say it. Say it all. Loretta, darling, I love you. Dear liar, I don't care. You're going to hurt me, saint, and I don't seem to mind. The night is young and you're so beautiful Here among the shadows, beautiful lady Open your heart My dance, I think. I have ordered you a neat whiskey, Mr. Toombs. <laughs> I thought you might like one after your efforts. How kind. Mm. Quite a good floor, isn't it? Oh. Ah! Oh, God's and little oh. fish is Oritz. Are you all right? Oh, my nut. <laughs> In the name of Beelzebub's been happening here. Let's have a look at you, old son. He's still on board, sir. Other side the sliding door. Right you are. You! Freeze! Hello, old cockroach. Come in and make yourself at home. Oh, but of course you already have. Quite a rubbish tip you've made of this place. 
There's still some of the bulkhead you haven't pulled to pieces. I'll finish that in a minute. Now, be careful with that gun. It's liable to go off. Don't come any closer. I'm Let warning go. you, don't come any closer. that gun. Oh, my God. I think you've killed him. I think you're right. Hmm. This is a bit of a poser. Yes. What do we do with him? No problem there, surely, old sport. A sack, a few bits of old iron from the engine room, and Betty's your aunt. What then? Friend Fogel, old son, when his henchman fails to report all present and correct. What was he after, I wonder? That great parcel thing come on board this afternoon. Well, the diving suit. Well, if that's what was in it. Ripping away at the packaging he was when I come across him. Mm, suspicious old co, Fogel. Well, now he'll never know. And now there's nothing for it but to carry on with the charade. You're not still going over there tomorrow. An innocent man would, even if he had caught a burglar in the night. You must be balmy. It's that perishing girl, isn't it? She's not perishing, Oris, and that's just the point. Not while I'm still on my feet. And how long will that be? And what the hell happens to my job when you're feeding the shrimps with this bloke here? Well, you could always go back to being an artist's model. <laughs> now, cheer up, old sport, and don't worry. I'll be having the time of my life. I'll take all the wind out of Birdie's sails when I step on board bright and beautiful. It ought to be a great moment. A perfect morning, Mr. Toombs. After an eventful night. You enjoyed our evening out? Oh, very pleasant. But I meant what happened later. What happened later, Mr. Toombs? Well, this harbour thief business is turning into an epidemic, Mr. Arnheim. I also had an unexpected visitor. My dear Mr. Toombs, did you lose anything valuable? No, nothing at all. We caught him. And then you were luckier than we were. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Page. I was just about to recount the story of our midnight intruder. Oh, that sounds exciting. My dear Mr. Toombs had one of those harbour thieves on board last night, and he caught him. A bit too exciting, perhaps. Oh, it was. My man Oris and I wrestled with him all over the saloon, trying to get his gun away from him. Then Oris hit him over the head and we tied him up and took him ashore. We lugged him along to the police station. But when they tried to revive him, they found he was, well, sort of dead. Dead? Hmm. Oris must have overestimated his strength. But won't you be arrested? Oh, dear me, no. They call it accidental death. I may have to attend an inquest next week. I'm not quite sure how they order these things in Guernsey. Is this where you take your dip, Professor Yule? <laughs> We're just about over the deepest sounding. Ninety-four fathoms. It isn't much, but it'll do for the first test. Have you known Mr. Fogel long? Uh, about six months now, Miss Page. Uh, he offered to help after my first descent. I was very glad to accept his offer. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I, I must give the equipment one last check before lunch. You know, Loretta, there's one person who may be sitting on the same volcano as we are, and he doesn't know it. Professor Yule. Exactly. When this new bathysol has proved itself, our dear Professor will be expendable. Fogel will simply get rid of him. But how? And when? I wish I knew. Good God. Uh, it looks uh, like some robot from Mars. Uh, beautiful, isn't it? Combination of a sphere and a diving suit. Uh, they lower me in through the top. Can you actually move about in it? Oh, quite well, really. It looks a great deal heavier than it is. Underwater, the air inside reduces the weight quite a lot. And it's made from a new lightweight alloy. 75% lighter than anything in the past. And as strong as tempered steel. What sort of pressures do you meet down there? Well, at uh, 3,000 feet, more than half a ton to the square inch. In an ordinary diving suit, you'd be crushed to a pulp. <laughs> uh, go down in it yourself, if you like, and prove how comfortable it is. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. I'll take your word for it. Can you hear me? Perfectly. All right. Uh, winch me up and lower me over. Good luck. Start winching. <laughs> Those cables? The winch line, the telephone wire, an electric cable. No air supply? No, he has two oxygen cylinders with him. 400. 450. 
must be nearing the seabed by now. How much cable have we let out? 550. 575. 575 feet, Professor. Uh, stop, stop. I'm on the bottom. Uh, everything's working perfectly, uh, including the heating. <laughs> it's very comfortable down here. Can you move about? Oh, yes. No difficulty. I'll try a short walk. Uh, give me another 20 feet of cable. Release another 20 feet. I've taken about ten steps. Uh, no sign of a leak. Humidity is still normal. Oh, uh, hold on. Something's happened to one of the oxygen cylinders. It's just fizzled out, though the gauge still shows three quarters full. It must be a faulty valve. I, I, I'm turning on the other one. You, you, you might bring me up now. Up? Windshim aboard! This might be it. What do you do? I don't know. Yet. Opposite! What is the matter? I think it's a fuse! They're just fixing the winch, Professor. We'll have you up in a few minutes. I, I, I hope it isn't anything serious. The reserve cylinder seems worse than the first. The, the pressure's falling rapidly. Uh, please don't be long. Can't we do anything? I'm afraid I know nothing about machinery. We must leave it to the engineers. Uh, th th this reserve cylinder is acting up like the first one. I, I don't think it's going to last much longer. What is the problem up there? We're trying to repair the winch. Oh, my God. The cylinder's just given out. Oh, can't you put the cable onto another winch? We have no other winch that would take the load. We could rig up a tackle. It'll take over an hour to winch him up with block and tackle. I, I, I'm getting giddy. I, I, I can't last much longer. You'll have to be quick or it'll be too late. Now, Mr. Arnheim, surely you've got a suggestion. I'm afraid not. Well, I have. Walk away from that winch, Sonny Jim, if you don't want to be carried away. Really, Mr. Toombs. Gun, Mr. Toombs. Have you gone mad? Not yet, but I'm likely to if our friend here doesn't get out of my way in the next two seconds. I know this is a ghastly situation, but you won't help me by getting hysterical. Everything possible is being done. One thing isn't being done, and I'm going to do it. Get him away from those controls, Fogel, and I'll start the winch. My dear Mr. Toombs... Simon, behind you! Watch out! Oh! I trust you're feeling better. Much better. And full of admiration. Oh, it was smooth, Birdie. Very smooth. You don't mind if I call you Birdie, do you? You were determined to flush me out, and in the end you succeeded. Very clever. And how is your pawn, the Professor? Unfortunately, the fault was traced too late, Mr. Templar. Poor you. A terrible death. So... You know who I am. I learned this morning. One of my men photographed you entering the Royal Hotel. Confirmation came by ship's telegram. And once you knew, it was curtains for the professor. He would certainly never have agreed to use his bathist stall for the purposes I have in mind. And Miss Page? A grave disappointment to me. My scheme was more successful than I bargained for. It netted two birds. She could not refrain from crying out a warning to you. So where do we go from here? Well, that depends on you. You have given me a good deal of trouble, Mr. Templar. The man you tangled with last night is essential to my plans. I want him back. Birdie, you're calling the wrong number. You need a spiritualist. You were telling the truth, then? Mostly. I wandered a little from the straight and narrow when I said we'd taken him to the police station. A bloke with my reputation can't afford to deliver dead bodies to the police, not even if they die of old age. So we gave him a sailor's funeral. I see. Well... Oh. That leaves me with a problem. He's one of my best men, and it may take a considerable time to replace him. Time I cannot afford. But fortunately, I see a solution. Do I detect the odour of a deal in the air? We shall shortly be anchoring directly over the wreck of the Chalfont Castle. A five million pounds worth of bullion in her strongroom, which I intend to remove before the official salvage operations begin. Hence the haste. You have deprived me of the only member of my crew who could have been relied on to open that strongroom. The man you killed was one of the best safe-breakers in Europe. But I have heard that the saint matches up to the best in the world. You want me to go down and um, give a demonstration? That is what I intend. In the bathystall? That will not be necessary. The Chalfont Castle is lying in 20 fathoms. An ordinary diving suit will be quite sufficient. Are you offering me a partnership? <laughs> Dear me, no. What I'm offering you is a chance to help your partner... My partner. Delectable Miss Page. 
And if I refuse... Use your imagination, Mr Templer. If you do refuse, I shall clearly have no further use for either of you. If you cooperate, the lovely Loretta will be put ashore as soon as convenient, alive. And I am to go ahead on your word. What other choice do you have, Mr Templer? You have 15 minutes to decide. How long do you think we'll live now? Indefinitely, according to Birdie. Until I'm a toothless old gaffer and you're a stalwart of the Women's Institute. If I do this job for him, he's ready to send us an affectionate greetings card on our jubilee. And you believe him? But he murdered you. For the Bathistol. But he doesn't need us dead. The mere fact that we're here proves that his racket has been exposed and that others know all about him. You don't sound all that convincing. I'm convinced enough to do what he wants. But in heaven's name, why? Because it's certain death if I don't, and by no means certain if I do. And because this will be the first strong room I've ever cracked in a diving suit. Oh, Simon. Oh. Mm. Just a few points before we screw the helmet on, Mr. Templer. I'm all ears. Or at least it feels as if I am with my head poking out of this diving suit. Ivalov will go down with you. He will lead you to the strong room. I have shown him where it is on the ship's plans. He will also carry the underwater hydro-oxygen torch, which he will use to cut through the steel plate on your directions. I shall be in touch with you both by telephone, and I will expect you to keep me informed of your progress. Is that clear? As a bell. Let's get started. Get the helmets on. Can you hear me? Receiving loud and clear. Then make for the cradle and we'll lower you down the side. For your sake as well as mine, I wish you well, Mr. Templar. We're at the strong room. I'm starting work. The strong room is open. Everything all right, Ivanov? Yes, the gold is here, but it'll take a long time to move. There's a glass dome above the door. If we break the glass, you can send the grab straight down, but we can't stay here for more than another few minutes. Break the glass first, and we'll bring you up. Calviere, Orbel. You two get ready to go down as soon as they come up. Gronda? Where? Attend to the grab. Right, we're through the glass. Bring them up. Stop! Why have you done that? Done what? Stopped bringing them up. My dear girl, 45 minutes at 20 fathoms is enough to saturate the blood with nitrogen. If you come up too quickly, you get diver's paralysis. The gas forms bubbles in the blood like champagne when you pull the cork. You have to come up gradually. (laughs) That's not what you were doing. What else? You were going to take one of those airlines off the pump, weren't you? You don't have to say anything. You were going to kill him. And if I was, how deeply would his death hurt you? I know why he went down for you. He wouldn't have done it to save his own life. He tried to make me believe that, but he couldn't. He knew you meant to kill him as soon as he'd done what you wanted. He wasn't afraid. But I knew you must have offered him something that he could believe. You made him do it for me. My dear Loretta, what drama. So he's the perfect gentle knight, is he? Dying to save a lady's honour. Exactly. And it's something you'll never understand. Such a pity chivalry won't be given its chance. But he never had any right to bargain on my behalf. I'm quite capable of doing that for myself. You're not in a position to make bargains. I once told you what I think of you, my dear, but you were trying to deceive me. I took risks for you. I gambled everything to keep you beside me. But I'm still beside you. You can take what you want from me by force, I suppose. But I could give. What? What? I could give it to you willingly. Let him go, and I'll stay with you. You have my word. Oh, I 
didn't know you had radio telephony on board. Oh, yes. I will show you how it works. This telegram goes via the radio station at Cherbourg. I have a chateau at Arcville. You can be as comfortable there as you wish after tomorrow. Is that where you'll put the saint ashore? Perhaps. He's safe enough for the moment, locked in his cabin. I'll decide what to do with him later. He must never know. About you and me, I mean. You understand? That is part of our bargain. Naturally. But I'll have to find some way to satisfy him. I'll think about it. I have too much to risk. But how could he threaten you now? My dear Loretta, do you realize even now what is at stake? Not only the cargo I now have on board. There have been others. I have to keep it all somewhere. Where? At the bottom of the sea. Off Arkville, under 30 feet of water. And what a treasure. Gold. And jewels such as you have never dreamed of. Nearly 12 million pounds worth. Oh. And it is for you to share. There's nothing in the world you can't have. Tonight we drop anchor above it, and we lower the Chalfont Castle gold to the same place. That is what I must protect from Simon Templar. All that afternoon, I remained locked up in that cabin, hearing the thuds and gratings of the incredible cargo coming aboard. I thought of Peter and Roger and Oris back in St. Peterport, but most of all, I was thinking of Loretta and tormenting myself with unanswerable questions. The shadows spread and deepened towards darkness. At length, I tackled the lock on the cabin door. Overhead, the first pale stars were coming out as I climbed onto the deckhouse roof, just as I'd done the last time. I looked over the edge, straight into the wheelhouse. You will forgive me if I send you below, my dear. I fear you might be tempted to swim ashore. Stuart, would you accompany Miss Page and lock the door behind her? Sir, will you be unloading the gold tonight? It will be safer. God alone knows what this man Templar has told his friends, and it will be necessary to sink the Falkenberg. A pity, but the wisest course. We can easily fit out a trawler later to recover the gold. Helmsman! Yeah? Tell Ivalov to be ready to go down in a quarter of an hour, and tell Calvieri to have a diving suit ready for me as well. I ran lightly ahead of the helmsman. Then as he passed beneath me, my arms shot out and grasped him by the throat. (coughs) I'll relieve you of your automatic, if you don't mind. Now, if you want to live to a ripe old age, Fritz, listen carefully. You're not taking that message to Ivalov, understood? Yeah, I understand. Good. You take me along with you, and you tell him that Vogel's instructions are that I'm to go down. One false move and bang, bang. Get me? Yeah, yeah. Then on your feet. I want Ivalov below decks when friend Vogel arrives. Arrange it, Fritz. Yeah, yeah. The helmsman played his part well enough. He ordered Ivalov to stay below with the rest of the crew while Calvieri prepared the two diving suits. Such cooperation deserved better than the uppercut I administered, but he would certainly have alerted Fogel to what had happened. By the time Fogel appeared to be helped into his suit, I was already standing by the rail with my helmet on, trying to look like Ivalov. A few minutes later, we were being lowered down the side, lit brilliantly by a 300-watt submarine lamp suspended from a boom. The lamp followed us into the water and hung six feet over our heads as we reached the bottom. In its blaze, I saw Fogel looking upwards as the grab descended towards us. I helped him direct the great claw and settle it around a huge rock. The wire cable straightened, became taut. Slowly the rock lifted, and there, laid open, was the last of Kurt Fogel's secrets. The most amazing Aladdin's cave that the hordes of piracy had ever known. Stay there, Valof, and guide the cases down to me. Slowly, slowly, release. How much gold had gone down in that first load? Half a million? A million? Valof, keep your wits about you. Again, I toiled and struggled to steer the laden grab over the hole. Six loads came down. Fogel was lost to view, stacking the gold inside the hole. When the grab disappeared above us for the last time, I drew my keen, heavy-bladed diver's knife. I thought of Professor Ewell. I thought of Loretta. I began to cut through the fibres of Fogel's line. As they parted, I tied his line around my waist. Then I cut through my own line and looped it to a jagged spur of granite. 
At that moment, I saw the top of Fogel's helmet emerge. I moved nearer and brought my helmet close to his until barely six inches separated our front windows. His black, burning eyes widened into pools of horror. His hands groped round and found the loose, trailing ends of his severed line. His mouth twisted in the shape of soundless words that no human ear would ever hear. Then I slashed my knife clean through the pipe, feeding him oxygen. He fell, toppling backwards, his arms waving, his hands clutching at the yielding water. Oh, it was quite easy, really, as soon as we got Loretta's radio telegram. Full marks there, Loretta. Fogel was very proud of his telephony. He explained it all to me. Well, we set off at once. Oris saw us through. We dropped a hook about a quarter of a mile away, then we paddled over in a dinghy. Everyone on deck seemed busy with the diving business, so we came aboard on the other side and went below. We collected seven specimens in all. Tied them up and left them ready for inspection. And where did you collect the American tragedy? <laughs> <laughs> Him. He crashed onto the Corsair earlier in the afternoon. It seemed all steamed up about something. We can't keep meeting like this, Steve. People will talk. I guess I owe you something for helping me clean up this job, Saint. I'll see Inger Bex here about it. They'll probably offer you a share of the reward. I won't say no, though it goes against the grain to earn money honestly. It's such an anticlimax. What next, Simon? Next? I suppose I'll go on stealing and fighting and winning and losing. I'll end up hanged or shot or stabbed in the back. That is, if I don't find a safe berth in prison first. <laughs> but that's the way it is. If I tried to live any other way, I'd suffocate from sheer boredom. Oh, but Simon, that's all for the day after tomorrow. What about tomorrow? We'll take tomorrow as it comes. Mm. Well, that's goodbye to all those millions you promised us. Whatever gave you that idea, Roger, old son? You don't think we three are going home just yet, do you? No. We're going over to the Corsair to unpack those nice new diving suits we've got on board. And then, one of you drawing room heroes is coming down with me on a little treasure hunt. Ah. The American tragedy can't possibly know how much Boodle is stowed away down there. And what he doesn't know about, he'll never miss. <laughs> now, how about a toast? To riches beyond compare. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. In Saint Overboard by Leslie Chartres, dramatised by Neville Teller, Paul Rees played the saint, Patsy Kensett, Loretta, Charles Simpson, Roger, Jonathan Keeble, Peter, John Hollis, Oris, Geoffrey Whitehead, Vogel, John Garasio, Murdoch, David Timpson, Professor Yule, and Joshua Taub, Arnheim. Saint Overboard was directed by Matthew Walters.